man. It's game over, man. It's game over. What the f are we gonna do now? What are we gonna do? Maybe we could build a fire, sing a couple of songs, huh? Why don't we try that?
today John finished the installation of the new metal door and lock leading to the common area. I hope this will keep my students from sneaking off during class. I spoke with Director Foster this morning and he informed me that John will be staying on the grounds permanently. A room has been made out for him in the cellar. It's good to have an extra set of hands around here, especially at night when most of the staff leave. I have to be honest, though. I don't know why Director Foster has picked John for this task. What is his background or qualifications? I don't have access to his files, so I don't know much about him. I'll ask the other staff. Perhaps they might have heard or know something about him. Anyways, I'll go the code for the new combination work. I wrote it down and hid it behind one of my insect display cases. Just in case I forget it.
Looks like I'm stuck doing double duty. The young woman who was supposed to watch the children after class has quit. Unbelievable. It's hard to find good help these days. Speaking of help, I have continued my little investigation of John Torrance, our new hire. The children have taken quite the liking to him. Sometimes he dresses up in a silly bear costume to entertain them. I find it rather tiresome. These children need order and discipline if they have any hopes of being adopted. Not all children have grown close to him, though. One child in particular, Kyle Reed, seems afraid of him. John offered to be his mentor and help him with his struggling grades. But so far, Kyle seems immune to his charm. Another thing that bothers me about John is his personality. He is very distant and short with other staff, almost to a point of being disrespectful. He seems to only open up to the children. It's all very confusing. Someone has been messing around in my tool shed after hours. I've often returned in the morning to my tools scattered or missing. I don't know why they just don't ask me to borrow what they need. The only people who have a key to the shed other than myself at the moment are Allison, Director Foster and John. I know Allison sometimes needs extra tools for the greenhouse, but she always returns what she uses. Director Foster leaves at night so it can't be him. That leaves John. But what could he be doing at night that requires my tools? I'm not one to start throwing accusations around, but I will bring up my concerns to Director Foster. We can't have random tools going unaccounted for with the children around. Someone could get hurt. The herd casts itself in flesh to besiege, and seeks to sate its unending hunger by swallowing the souls of the living, which are then lost unto the shifting pits of Kanda, where the spheres of Yogg-Sotho steal those who have opened the gate unprepared while the things that were and shall be again turn their bodies unto vassal shells for themselves. Katra Amastrobin, Asanta Tandi Manon, Nancy's, Ohan Onsapar, Samantha Rosa, can 
Ever since his best friend Eric was adopted, he rapidly burst out in fits of anger followed by periods of withdrawal. The only thing that seems to calm him down is an old teddy bear. The teddy bear is the only thing that was found with him when his mother abandoned him at the front gates of the orphanage when he was just a baby. It's not healthy for a child 
in his early teens to still be attached to a stuffed animal. But for now, I think it's important for his mental and emotional well-being. If he continues down this path, he will face increasingly harsh punishment for his misbehavior. I will continue monitoring him. I will report back to Director Foster. Hiding this tape as a record just in case anything happens to me. I found out who has been stealing medication from my office when I'm not here. It's John Torrance. After he installed the new keypad lock on the medication locker, I asked him to set the combination to my birthday. Only he and I knew this, and within days more medication had gone missing. It has to be him. I fear I am in danger as well as the children. Some of them have come into the office with bruising on their bodies. One child Carl Reed is bruising on his neck and wrist which suggests he's been restrained. Director Foster has not been in his office for the past week. No one knows where he is. John Torrance is an animal. He must be stopped.
to summon forces of evil into our earthly realm. Know that, in ancient times, there were those known as the Dark Ones, neither demon nor fully human. They created this book as a weapon against humanity. These pages were cut from the bodies of the damned upon which the Dark Ones inked their passages in human blood. Passages that contain the power to create portals connecting our world to the underworld where evil resides. The Dark Ones use this book to hold power over all mankind. Preparations are complete. I will soon ascend and be with the Dark Ones. John will carry out the sacrifices that must be made. The blood of the pure must be spilled. John believes he will join me in my ascension, but he is nothing more than a means to an end. I took him under my wing with promises of wealth power and eternal life. He was hired here to first get close to the children, then to extract suffering from them by any means necessary. And while some of the staff might begin to catch on to him, they will never suspect me pulling the strings behind the scenes. He is the perfect scapegoat and his corrupted soul combined with the soul of Kyle Reed, of which I selected to endure the harshest of suffering should be more than enough to fuel the dark ritual. But to be sure I have ordered John to kill as many children and staff as he can. On the day of days, I leave this cassette so that others may know what will truly happen here, and know that nothing could be done to stop it.